perched on high cliffs, nestled on storm-swept islands, or isolated in the vast expanse of a treacherous sea, these lighthouses are not just navigational aids, but tales of human ingenuity and guardianship. I'm going to shine a light on 15 lighthouses built in terrifying locations. Let's start with number 15, the Strombolicchio Lighthouse. Strombolicchio Lighthouse is situated on, of course, Strombolicchio, a small rocky islet off the northern coast of the island of Stromboli in the Tyrrhenian Sea near Italy. The lighthouse was constructed in 1926 by the Italian Navy and stands at a height of 160 feet. Its primary purpose is to guide maritime traffic through the perilous waters surrounding the active volcano of Stromboli. Built from volcanic rock, this lighthouse is a stark and sturdy structure designed to withstand the harsh conditions of the marine environment. The cylindrical tower, devoid of any ornate embellishments, serves as a functional beacon for ships navigating the waters. Now, reaching the lighthouse is a challenge, accessible only by boat, the islet surrounded by steep cliffs and erratic currents. The sheer remoteness of this location does underscore dedication required to keep the lighthouse operational. The perilous nature of the site is accentuated by the active volcanic activity of nearby Stromboli. This volcano has earned the moniker of Lighthouse of the Mediterranean due to its consistent and visible eruptions, posing an added layer of danger for those tasked with the upkeep of this light. Number 14. Torlites Lighthouse the Torlites Lighthouse, a remarkable site right off the coast of Andros, the northernmost island of the Cyclades in Greece. The lighthouse holds a unique position as one of the most unconventional lighthouses in the world. Perched atop a weathered rock formation known as the Torlites, this lighthouse stands as a beacon of human ingenuity and adaptability in some of the most challenging terrains. It was constructed in 1887. Torlites Lighthouse was born out of a necessity to guide ships safely through the turbulent waters surrounding Andros. The lighthouse itself is a slender iron structure rising to a height of approximately 23 feet and topped with the lantern room that houses the light source. Now, the Aegean Sea, which surrounds the lighthouse, has been a maritime crossroads for centuries, hosting trade routes and naval activities. Consequently, the region has seen its fair share of shipwrecks, some of which have gained historical significance. One notable shipwreck in the vicinity of Andros is that of the HMHS Britannic. Now, the Britannic, the sister ship of the infamous RMS Titanic, sank in the Aegean Sea near the island of Cape, which is relatively close to Andros. The Britannic served as a hospital ship during World War I and struck a mine in 1916 and sank in less than an hour. Fortunately, due to improved safety measures following the Titanic disaster, the majority of the crew and medical staff survived. The wreck of the Britannic lies in the depths of the Aegean and has become a popular destination for technical divers. Number 13. The Frying Pan Tower Frying Pan Shoals Light Tower, a decommissioned lighthouse, stands approximately 39 miles southeast of Southport, North Carolina, and 32 miles from Bald Head Island in North Carolina on the Frying Pan Shoals. It's privately owned and once served as a bed and breakfast for retreat. The tower has weathered significant tropical storms, showcasing its resilience, accessible by both boat and helicopter. An on-site inspection in January 2010 affirmed that the tower's structural integrity, though repairs were deemed necessary. This light tower, standing 80 feet tall, is ingeniously modeled after a Texas tower, a steel oil drilling platform with four legs. Positioned at the confluence of the Cape Fear River and the Atlantic Ocean, the tower has historically marked the treacherous shoals, a duty once carried out by a light boat since 1854. In 1966, though, the tower was constructed and manned year-round until its automation in 1979. However, GPS technology has led to its decommissioning in 2004, rendering it obsolete for maritime navigation. Notably, in August of 2011, Frying Pan Tower endured the direct impact of Hurricane Irene, with winds measuring up to 67 miles an hour and waves reaching 28 feet. Surprisingly, an observational flight the day after the storm revealed no visible damage to the tower. Its journey from active maritime service to private ownership, coupled with its ability to withstand nature's fury, has earned Frying Pan Shoals Light Tower a mention in Time's article on restored lighthouses, transformed into bed and breakfast facilities. The only question is, will the frying pan tower withstand the next big one? Probably, yeah, I think so. Number 12. Aniva Lighthouse The Aniva Lighthouse, a striking maritime structure with a tumultuous history, stands on the southern tip of Sakhalin Island in Russia, overlooking the waters of the Sea of Okhotsk. The decommissioned lighthouse is known for its architectural design and the challenges posed by its location. Constructed in 1939 by Japanese engineers during their occupation of Sakhalin, Aniva Lighthouse has served as a navigational aid for ships traversing the treacherous sea. It stands at nearly 100 feet tall and has a cylindrical tower topped with a lantern room that once housed a powerful light source. 
The design of the tower reflects a blend of Japanese and Soviet architectural influences, making it a distinctive landmark here. Its past includes a use as a military outpost during World War II and its subsequent transfer to Soviet control after the war's conclusion. Now, accessing the lighthouse is no small feat. Its remote location on the southern tip of the island, coupled with the region's harsh climate, presents some challenges for those attempting to reach it. The unpredictable weather, with frequent storms and icy conditions, makes sea travel hazardous, while the surrounding cliffs and rocky terrain add an additional layer of danger. In 1990, the personnel at the lighthouse in Russia were withdrawn and a transition to automatic operation. Utilizing radioisotope thermoelectric generators, the lighthouse remained powered until 2006. Presently, the structure sits idle and deserted. Despite its neglected state, this lighthouse continues to draw visitors seeking views, picturesque photo opportunities, and the exhilarating thrill of exploring an abandoned landmark. Number 11. The Nottawasaga Island Lighthouse this lighthouse, standing at a height of 85 feet, was constructed in a conical shape with an interior column consistently measuring 10 feet in diameter, despite the exterior tapering. Crafted from locally quarried limestone, the structure featured varying wall thickness, ranging from 9 feet at the base to a slender 2 feet at the top. Two layers filled with loose stone cemented the inner and outer sections. Now, at the pinnacle of this tower, a granite section was added for additional stability, supporting the lantern rooms. This design's departure from the era's typical materials – brick, iron, wood, concrete – made the lighthouse unique. The lanterns themselves were fashioned from copper alloys, glass, and cast iron, contributing to its distinctive appearance. Adorned with a whitewash exterior and red trim, each lighthouse in the collection, except for the 55-foot tower on Christian Island, stood uniformly at 80 feet. The tower shared a conical shape, with the rock courses at the base reaching 7 feet thick and ground-level walls taping from 2 to 6 feet. Connected to it was the Keeper's House, now fallen into disrepair at the Nottawasaga site. However, a fully restored version stands proudly at the Chantry Island Lighthouse, a nearly identical counterpart. Despite the limited access to their interiors, a visit to the Chantry Island Lighthouse offered a glimpse of exceptional craftsmanship. The Lantern Room, a true jewel, showcased the pinnacle of mid-1800s coppersmithing. The red-painted, ornate roof featured a rain gutter system adorned with bronze lion-head sculptures. Beneath the copper roof, the 30 panes of glass provide protection against the Fresnel lens, maintaining a transparent pathway for light while keeping the weather at bay. Manufactured by the Louis Sauter Company of Paris and installed by skilled French craftsmen, the most powerful second-order Fresnel lens graced Point Clark, Chantry Cove, and Nottawasaga Island, adding to the historical significance of these coastal beacons. Number 10. Bishop Rock Lighthouse Bishop Rock, known in Cornish as Men Epscop, stands as a scary off the British coast of the northern Atlantic Ocean, renowned for its historic lighthouse. Located at the westernmost point of the islands of Scilly, an archipelago 28 miles off the southwestern tip of the Cornish Peninsula, it holds the distinction of being recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's smallest island with a building on it. The lighthouse's history dates back to 1847 when the original iron structure was created but succumbed to the elements before completion. The present building, finished in 1858, marked its inaugural lighting on September 1st of that year in the absence of a helipad. Early visitors to the lighthouse would descend by using winches from the top, creating a thrilling approach to boats waiting below. The lighthouse initially had a three-long hundredweight fog bell, but it was washed away during a storm in January 1860. A replacement larger bell was installed in 1864, sounding once every 10 seconds. Various measures were attempted over the years to mitigate the impact of heavy weather on the lighthouse as well. But a severe storm in April of 1874 subjected the tower to 120-foot waves, shattering the reinforced glass of the lantern and inundating the living quarters. In response, James Douglas, the successor to Walker as engineer-in-chief at Trinity House, reinforced the lower section with broad iron bands bolted through the stonework. Further challenges arose in the winter of 1881 when storms eroded sizable blocks of granite just above the high water mark. Douglas once again was called upon to inspect and propose a design to fortify the structure, incorporating massive granite blocks into the rock and dovetailing them onto the lighthouse. This ongoing battle with the elements, it underscores the resilience and engineering ingenuity required to maintain Bishop Rock as a vital, if not voracious, maritime landmark. Number 9. Whiteford Lighthouse Whiteford Light, an exceptional cast iron structure, was constructed in 1865 according to the design of John Bowen of Lanali, commissioned by the Lanali Harbor and Bury Navigation Commissioners. Situated off the British coast, it marks the shoals of Whiteford Point, replacing an earlier 1854 piled structure now lost to time. 
Notably, it stands as the sole wave-swept cast iron tower of its size in Britain, adding to a unique maritime significance. The lighthouse, standing at 44 feet, is strategically placed position just above the low water level with a base diameter of approximately 24 feet, expanding to 11 feet 6 inches at the lantern level. It's supported by 88 wooden piles driven into a glacial moraine. The structure is connected horizontally by whaling pieces, secured with 500 cast iron plants and bolts. The shell structure consists of 105 bent tapered cast iron plates, each about 32 millimeters thick, bolted together with cast iron bolts weighing approximately 2 pounds each. Now, despite this robust design, the lighthouse did face challenges during the 1870s when vertical cracks appeared in the lowest three rings. Ingeniously, local blacksmith Powell fashioned wrought iron straps to reinforce these crack plates, and a skirt in 1885 addressed the structural concerns attributed to settling and swaying. The lighthouse's equipment as of 1888 indicated provisions for about two keepers, though census returns from 1871 to 1901 name a single keeper. Their working pattern involved two weeks at Whitford Light, alternating with two weeks at Linnelli Harbor Lighthouse. Despite the removal of the light after a unit failure, Whiteford Light, now owned by the county council, maintains its navigational significance in daylight. Its historical distinction lies in being the only wave-washed cast iron lighthouse of its size in Britain. Number 8. The Boone Island Lighthouse Boone Island Light, situated on the 300 by 700 foot Boone Island off the southern coast of Maine, stands as the tallest lighthouse in both Maine and New England, reaching an impressive height of 133 feet. Located near Cape Nettick, the lighthouse's focal plane sits 137 feet above Bean High Water Level, with its distinctive beacon flashing white every five seconds. It's accessible only by boat or aircraft. Boone Island Light is not open to the public. It's a history of a lighthouse on Boone Island traces back to 1710, when the ship Nottingham Galley ran aground on this desolate island, leading to a harrowing tale of cannibalism among the stranded crew before their rescue. Their first attempts at establishing a light station in 1799 were met with challenges, as a wooden tower was washed away within five years and replaced by a stone day beacon. Subsequent efforts in 1811 saw the construction of a granite tower, but succumbed to a storm in 1832. The present-day cylindrical brown granite tower standing at 133 feet was erected in 1855 and originally featured a second-order Fresnel lens, making it the tallest lighthouse in New England at the time. Though not in terms of elevation above sea level, a new keeper's dwelling accompanied this construction. Boone Island Light faced significant damage during a 1978 blizzard, resulting in the loss of the tower stones and all accompanying structures. Consequently, the station transitioned to automation in 1980, with a solar-powered beacon installed by the U.S. Coast Guard. The Coast Guard retains control of the active station, while the lighthouse itself is leased to the American Lighthouse Foundation. Its historical significance led to its inclusion on the National Register of Historic Places as Boone Island Light Station in 1988. Steeped in isolation and danger, Boone Island Light has weathered some storms that once marooned keepers here for weeks. The lighthouse's resilience is exemplified in an anecdote where on the brink of starvation, keepers signaled a passing schooner for help. The crew, responding to their plea, delivered food in a mackerel barrel, ensuring the keepers' survival until they could obtain supplies from the village of York. Moving on to number 7, the Execution Rocks Lighthouse. What's in a name? Well, the solitary Execution Rocks Lighthouse standing guard in the Long Island Sound not only marks the way to the mansions that inspired the Great Gatsby, but also conceals a rather dark history, as the name would suggest. Constructed in the 1850s on a tiny rocky island known as the Execution Rocks, positioned equidistant from New Rochelle and Port Washington in Long Island Sound, this lighthouse harbors dark tales. Legend has it that during the American Revolutionary War, British redcoats occupied Long Island and cruelly chained colonial prisoners to the rocks, letting the tide determine their fate, penning a rather eerie chapter in the island's history. In the 1920s, the island's gaslight era narrative took a modern turn when notorious criminal Carl Panzram admitted to luring sailors away from bars and leaving them to their fate on execution rocks. Even after the lighthouse transitioned to full automation in the 1970s, visitors reported haunting experiences, including unusual sounds, apparitions, and ghostly footsteps, a chilling testament to the island's troubled past. While the last lighthouse keeper retired in the 1970s, tours are now available in the summer through the Lighthouse Restorations Organization. Water taxis departing from Port Washington provide an opportunity to cruise near the island, offering glimpses of the opulent Gold Coast mansions that served as inspiration for Gatsby's house and F. Scott Fitzgerald, the Great Gatsby. 
For those seeking a more immersive experience, overnight stays can be arranged directly through the nonprofit. Number 6. Kipsara Lighthouse The Kipsara Leaning Lighthouse is an iconic beacon off the coast of the Estonian island of Saurima and stands a testament to the relentless forces of nature. Erected in 1933, the lighthouse initially graced solid ground, positioned more than 80 feet inland from the coastline. However, the unfolding decades witnessed the gradual encroachment of erosion, compelling the tower to embark on an unconventional journey seaward. The concrete structure, steadfast against the Baltic Sea's relentless assault, has steadily shifted into the water, adopting a distinctive Pisa-like tilt under the persistent influence of the waves. At its most precarious, the lighthouse leaned almost 15 degrees out of plumb, creating a dramatic visual spectacle. Yet the dynamic interplay between the sea's forces and the underlying foundation has, to some extent, restored a measure of verticality. Nevertheless, from a certain vantage point, the lingering impression remains – a precarious equilibrium on the verge of toppling. Standing tall at 82 feet, the Kipsara Leaning Lighthouse carries a rich maritime history that predates its construction. Since 1879, a station has occupied this spot, serving as a guiding light for ships navigating the perilous shores of Estonia. Over the ensuing 80-plus years, this solitary sentinel has become a poignant victim of the very coastline it once diligently announced. Today, surrounded by water, the lighthouse had stood silent since 1992, its active service relegated to memory. Number 5. Tridrangar Lighthouse Thredrangar Lighthouse, perched on an almost unreachable pillar rising from the ocean floor, stands as one of the world's most extreme lighthouses. It was built in 1939. Its isolation is emphasized by the fact that only access to and from the light is by helicopter, an unsurprising necessity given its precarious location. While it might seem like an ideal retreat for hermits, monks, or those adverse to the company of others, this light is in fact uninhabitable. Abandoned since 1992, the lighthouse serves as a reminder of the relentless force of nature and the constantly changing coastlines of Iceland. Standing at a height of 82 feet, the Rangar Lighthouse is a history that predates its construction. A station has occupied the spot since 1879, guiding ships through the hazardous and never-changing shores of Estonia. However, over the 80-plus years since its construction, the lighthouse has become a victim of the very coastline it once protected. The lighthouse, located around four and a half miles off the coast of mainland Iceland, just off the Westman Islands, is perched atop a basalt stack, rising 120 feet above the sea. Constructed just before the outbreak of World War II when Iceland was still part of Denmark, the lighthouse posed a formidable challenge for its builders. In 1938, construction began, requiring workers to scale cliffs without the aid of helicopters. The harsh conditions, including slick rocks, rain, and bitter winds, made this task arduous. While the light remains uninhabited, periodic maintenance is quite necessary. In July 2015, six workers were flown by helicopter to conduct maintenance, offering a glimpse into the sheer remoteness of this thing. The lighthouse's unique design and enigmatic history continue to draw attention, making it a captivating subject for those fascinated by the intersection of nature and human endeavors. This light, with its captivating narrative, stands as a testament to the enduring challenges and mysteries presented by the world's most extreme landscapes. Number 4. Fastnet Lighthouse Fastnet Light, the 177-foot-tall stone sentinel, is an imposing structure perched on the remote Fastnet Rock, surrounded by the vastness of the Atlantic Ocean. Positioned 4 miles southwest of Cape Clear Island and 8.1 miles from the County Cork on the Irish mainland, Fastnet Lighthouse has played a critical role in guiding ships through these waters of the Atlantic. Known by the evocative moniker Ireland's Teardrop, Fastnet Rock rises about 98 feet above the low water mark. It's a small clay slate islet with quartz veins, distinguished by its separation from the smaller Little Fastnet to the south by a 33-foot channel. The name Fastnet itself traces its route to Old Norse, possibly derived from Havastane, meaning Sharp Stone Isle. Now, beyond its geographical characteristics, Fastnet holds historical resonance, being the last part of Ireland seen by 19th-century Irish immigrants embarking on journeys to North America. The journey of Fastnet Light began with the construction of it in 1853. This initiative aimed to replace an earlier structure on Cape Clear Island following the tragic loss of Stephen Whitney in 1847, an American sailor. The initial lighthouse, designed by George Halpin and built at a cost of about 17,000 euros, featured a cast iron structure with an oil burning lamp producing 38 kilocandles of light. Various attempts were made to fortify the tower, including filling the lower floors with solid material in 1865. 
Recognizing the need for a more robust structure, the commissioners of Irish Lights decided to construct a replacement in 1891. Stone was chosen over cast iron, giving the latter's perceived inadequacy, especially after the nearby calf tower suffered damage in a storm in 1881. The task of designing the new light fell to William Douglas, James Cavanaugh supervising. This ambitious project involved using over 2,000 dovetailed blocks of Cornish granite, totaling over 4,400 tons, to create a tower that would withstand the harsh maritime conditions. The fog signal, initially explosive, evolved into an electric fog horn in 1974. The original vaporized paraffin light transitioned into an electric one on May 10, 1969. In March of 1989, the lighthouse embraced automation, monitored and controlled through a UHF telemetry link to Mizzenhead Lighthouse in County Cork. The light now produces a 0.14 second white flash every 5 seconds, with a range of about 27 nautical miles and a power of about 2,500 kilocandles. In 1985, a colossal rogue wave measuring 157 feet high struck the lighthouse. This incident highlighted the extreme conditions that this structure endured in its maritime perch. Additionally, on October 16, 2017, during Hurricane Ophelia, a wind gust of 119 miles an hour was recorded at the light, setting an Irish record. Number 3. Sambro Island Lighthouse The Sambro Island Lighthouse, positioned at the entrance to Halifax Harbor in Nova Scotia, stands as a testament to maritime history, facing challenges of treacherous waters and witnessing significant events over the centuries. Constructed during the Seven Years' War, the Sambro Lighthouse is the oldest surviving lighthouse in North America, with its building marked as a National Historic Place. In 1758, Nova Scotia's House of Assembly passed its first act, levying taxes on incoming vessels and alcohol imports to fund the lighthouse, emphasizing its importance. Its surroundings have earned a notorious reputation for shipwrecks, owing to a plethora of rocks and shoals. During the American Revolution, the battle off Halifax in 1780 saw a fierce engagement between the British privateer brig Resolution and the American privateer ship Viper near the Sambro Light, leaving a significant toll on both sides. Sambro Island, a granite island surrounded by dangerous shoals, hosts not only the 18th century stone tower of the lighthouse, but also structures like the gas house and a foghorn shed. Ruins from the 1960s, including abandoned keepers' houses and cannons used as fog signals, add to the historical landscape here. While regular tours are discouraged, initiatives like the annual open house tours organized by the Nova Scotia Lighthouse Preservation Society and the community of Sambro offers glimpses into the island's past and its role in maritime history. A geological wonder, the Devil's Staircase, and artifacts like the First Order Fresnel lens now displayed in the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic in Halifax enrich the narrative of Sambro Light. Number 2. Tevenek Lighthouse Tevenek Lighthouse, situated on the western edge of Brittany near the Pont du Vent, holds a significant place in maritime history, especially in securing the perilous passage of Rade de Seine. The lighthouse, automated in 1910, has played a critical role alongside Le Vielle in navigating the treacherous waters of the Ras de Sun. This strategic location, a hazardous area with islands, shoals, and rocks, underscores the importance of this light in aiding navigation here. It was designated a historic monument on December 31, 2015. It's got a historical legacy linked to the hazards of this place. The construction of the Armen Lighthouse, west of the Chaussée de Seine, started in 1867, emphasizing the efforts to enhance navigation in the region. The lighthouse, activated in 1875, stands as an early example of a sector light, employing distinctive characteristics such as red and white signals or varying flashing rates. Beyond its functional significance, this lighthouse is surrounded by legends, contributing to its mystique. It's considered one of the most peculiar sights in lighthouse history. Rumors suggest that the lighthouse is haunted. Stories recount the experience of lighthouse keepers, with claims of ghostly voices driving the first keeper to insanity. The French government's response, including reclassification as a two-man lighthouse and recruiting married couples, adds another layer of mystery to the lighthouse. Unexplained deaths and unsettling incidents further fueled its reputation. In 2010, it underwent automation, marking the end of its manned operation. Today, though, it still stands as a silent witness to maritime history, its light no longer guided by keepers but still echoing the tales of the past. Number 1. St. George Reef Lighthouse The enduring St. George Reef Lighthouse stands resolute in a hostile environment, surrounded by treacherous rocky terrain, relentless frigid waters, and punishing gale-force winds. 
constructed to prevent catastrophic shipwrecks akin to the tragic fate of the Brother Jonathan steamer in 1865, the lighthouse's location was intentionally inhospitable. Perched in isolation, those brave enough to man this desolate outpost faced constant peril, leading to the loss of lives, sanity, and a series of challenges during its construction in the late 19th century. Over the years, it's gained a notorious reputation for its danger, exacerbated by natural forces like the 1923 storm that swept away the engine house, unleashing waves towering over 70 feet high. In 1975, acknowledging the perils it posed, the lighthouse was decommissioned and replaced by a lit buoy. The St. George Reef Lighthouse Preservation Society took charge of the site in 1996, and they embarked on a maintenance and restoration effort funded by helicopter rides over the island. Unfortunately, the Department of Transportation halted the rides in 2012 until a helipad could be constructed, facing delays due to the challenging rocky terrain. This lighthouse's mystique and perilous history persist, with hopeful enthusiasts placed on a waiting list for helicopter rides, even though the resumption date remains uncertain. The St. George Reef Lighthouse, testament to maritime history, stands as a silent sentinel, its enduring legacy echoing the stories of courage, danger, and the unforgiving forces of nature. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.